Well, then now we're going to Pipo Serrano, as I said, from uh, uh, Barcelona, from HTV. It's probably uh, different in Spanish, but <laughs> kind of. Can I invite you to well, uh, enlighten us what you do with mobile? All right. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for uh, being here. Uh, as you say, I'm the deputy director of uh, Show in HTV, Buite in Catalan. We do it from Barcelona for Catalonia. And I'm also the head of digital, the editor, digital editor, which is a kind of a some kind of person who never existed there. So uh, I like to, um, I'm, I'm going to do what Glenn asked me. He said, try to pronosticate. I'm not very good at that too. I'm not very good at that, Aaron. Uh, I said uh, Trump was not going to win and I said um, Brexit was not going to go well. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to be kind of, I'm going to try it. So um, let me first go with um, the, before we go with the future of mobile content creation, with uh, how to introduce Mojo in a traditional newsroom. That was kind of um, hard and staying alive even more, uh, at least the first months. Uh, that was hard and um, we do the news at ATV. We, uh, we lead a team of uh, 40 journalists plus around 20 more people in, in the team. Uh, we do different daily shows, a big daily show at uh, evening from 7.30 to 10.30. We've got different short TV news. We do the weekend show. We do coverage, special coverage, correspondence and all that. The thing is that when I arrived there in 2015 as uh, all these responsibilities, uh, the whole scenario was exciting. It was perfect because it was like this. Yeah. Sorry for that. I mean, I think my bosses would hate me if I show that. That was our website in 2015, a non-responsive web that only showed pieces of the show, of the main show. That was all. So fragmentation and putting them. And the same with Twitter. Our Twitter account was kind of terrible. Um, so what I tried to tell with that is that it was pretty easy to make it better. Uh, so uh, I was not that good. It was, it was easy to do it. Uh, what you see on the left, I should try that, yeah, was how I found it. And that was how it uh, started to be some weeks afterwards. Uh, the website uh, happened the same. We improved it a lot. We just add uh, better features and we made it more journalistic because it, it was made by some people of uh, websites, ITs and all that, but not journalistic. And now we've got this one, which is a uh, pretty much better, I'd say, uh, responsive and, and more journalistic uh, tool. We, our metrics got much better really, really fast, and uh, we started to realize that everything worked very well. We implemented Snappy TV. Probably many of you know or heard about Snappy TV. Uh, just for those of you who doesn't, uh, this is owned by Twitter, and what they do is they introduce your stream there so that you can fragment on live very fast while the show is going on, and you can just deliver any piece really fast. So instead of headlines, bring the piece, bring the content. Uh, the same with some um, data journalism. We started doing some data journalism, which works very well, and trying to be a bit, um, how would say, um, innovative. We were the first doing a Periscope producer in Spain uh, just 10 days after Obama did it on, on, on his last page on, on United Nations, I think. And well, we tried to be the, uh, ahead on, on, on every single thing. Uh, that was a bit the first part, trying to make everything more digital. But on those years, from the very beginning up to now, uh, Mojo arrived to our newsroom. And we were blessed, and sorry for that, but we were blessed by three election campaigns in Spain. Well, two in Spain and one in Catalonia. Probably that's not something that uh, normally we like to do, but uh, at least not that in one year. But it was great. And here's a recommendation, a tip for any of you who has the responsibility to change things on a newsroom. When you've got some extra thing, something kind of exciting, new, uh, it's a time to say to reporters, all right, let's kind of do this just for the campaign. And then you push it to everyone. So uh, we did that with seven to 10 guys going around Spain, covering the different political campaigns. And afterwards, when they started to be mojo, and when they started telling their stories, we just spread it into the whole uh, newsroom. Uh, so it was great. It was really fantastic having that campaign, and it helped uh, a lot. Things got better when we got to MojoCon 2016, and I met many of you, and I, I discovered, also being a guy of radio, that I wanted um, workflows to be faster. Uh, we were talking about before. Uh, so I said, we need to implement Mojo on it. And when I saw this guy, I don't know if he's around here, Nick Garnett, and I saw this video, which I'm not going to play again because it would be tiring. Uh, you should, uh, well, you should see that that was Nick Garnett on live, and that was the way he was doing it. When I saw that video, my, my mind kind of exploded. 
And I said, I want to do that. We are going to do that. And we did it. Uh, and that was great. So when I got to the newsroom, that was my problem. It was time, and probably that's familiar to many of you, to mojoing against the IT guys. That's terrible. Uh, many of them prefer those big cameras, many of them prefer whatever, but they don't understand that that little toy that you are showing can do the job. So uh, after a lot of mojoing against the IT guys and listening to that statement, I don't know if it says anything to you, but they, they used to tell me, that's not brokers. I mean, that's not quality enough for TV, so that's not brokers. The answer, right answer, was, all right, are we more brokers? Let's say more brokers, more quality than RT, BBC, CNN, AJ+, whatever. Um, well, they look at you like, stare at you like, well, this stupid guy, I mean, he's going to be like, uh, yeah, I, I was a bit um, annoying them. So, um, but we did it. Uh, so it was great. And everything happens. La extrema derecha y las ibas paparetas. Son los italianos del Mobile World Congress. Con armas matras perillosamente aprobadas. Bueno, ni Josep, que es un gran. Construí una ciudad para tres. La actualidad del video mensaje me ha marcado para que esta sala de la prestigiosa para primera vagada de Ramonda. Mi, han ido a la presión provisional. Suporta al son de ellos. Siempre ellos son seriosos. Se ha guañado, sorpresa, putón. Las primeras informaciones a cargo de todos confirmadas. Yeah, that's Mojo, that's what we do. And uh, all of that guys were in Mojo. And um, as you can see, there were different qualities. We needed, and we, we did it, we tried a lot, we tested a lot, lots of different qualities to see how it, it got into the TV. And uh, well, some of them are really good and actually they are pretty good right now. What do we have today? Well, we've got the same number, exact same number of traditional cameras than Mojo kids in the newsroom. So we combined them. It's not one or the other one, it's both. Uh, our correspondence in New York, in Brussels, or any special coverage is done on Mojo. Easier, faster, look lives and lives, everything is done on Mojo. And we can cover more stories, we can do more journalism, we can explain better small, small stories, we can be closer to the people and we can do it in a cheaper way. Correspondent was connecting with us in New York uh, and it costs him between 500 and 1,000 euro every connection, every day. Well, we now do it for one euro. Less? Nothing. So, great. Let's now go to the future. All right. The magic ball. I didn't bring it because I thought the crystal ball would be heavy in the, in the back. Um, I'm going to try some, some other things. Uh, so, I'm going to be brave on this because in two years' time, you're, you're going to say, all right, people, you, you messed it all. Like with Trump, like with Brexit. Yeah, I did it. And I need to do it in two angles, two perspectives, technology and journalism. How is this going to be in, Glenn asked me, five years. I'm going to say two, three years. Maybe five, yeah, but um, I, I, can, I can go with five years. So these two angles are technology and journalism. Let's go first on technology. I'm sure there's gonna be much more content created from mobile to mobile. So not necessarily from any laptop to mobile or on the other way around, mobile to mobile. So it means that as we were talking this morning, 5G, 5G is gonna be here. We are in, actually in 4K, it's gonna be 8K, eventually 16K or whatever, 32K or whatever. Um, I presume and I think it's going to be iOS and Android. In our newsroom, we've got half of the Mojo Kids Android and half of the Mojo Kids uh, iPhone. Uh, yeah, I know that's a bit crazy and it sounds crazy, but it's great. And reporters feel comfortable and some of them say, I want an, uh, an iPhone because I'm, I'm comfortable. Go with it. It's the same. I mean, we can do more or less the same. So I think it's going to be even more like that. And this is going to be probably global content. So we're going to be able to create global content or content for us, but at the same time, it's going to be easy with voice recognition or automatic translation to be consumed everywhere. So why worrying about having limitations or language barriers? It's going to be everywhere. More things, it's going to be integrated, better integrated. Pretty much like SVT you were saying, or uh, it happens in BBC uh, with this newsroom that comes with you. So logo, look and feel, everything shut with the phone coming in automatically inserted on your, on your pieces. We were gonna be able to send, edit, polish, as we do, go live with our phones, with our brand, with our watermark, or with our in and out and whatever we want, and vertical or not. I think we, if we do it for TV, it's not gonna be vertical, but at the same time, we could use vertical, and with both spaces, use maybe a feed of a timeline, or use any other information that we can just give to our audience. So why not? 
vertical or not is going to be good. The important thing is the content, so it doesn't matter. I think it's going to be more reliable first because I think it's going to be introduced and included much more metadata on the information we receive. So trying to fight against those fake news or alternative facts, as some say, uh, we're going to be able to prove and, and check if the information that we receive from citizen journalists, for example, has the location, time. It's not from a month ago or from a year ago. It's from yesterday at that time. So we're going to check that, the authorship, and all that information. The, the citizen journalism is going to be more reliable. I know that that word, that concept is controversial. It doesn't matter. Whatever we get, whatever we gather from others is going to be more reliable. What about our correspondence? I also think that's going to change. Does it make sense that we send a guy to St. Petersburg, Petersburg when there is a terrorist attack a day after to tell us what happened there when he was not there, when he doesn't know the idiocracy of the place, it doesn't make any sense. And what about the guys who are based on 30 places, multiple places? Maybe having one or two or three on, on the main spots is great. But what about trusting the local guys, local correspondents, who maybe are offered like some uh, providers do, like LiveU, TVU, and all that, on a kind of social network in where you can just contact a guy, say, I want to see what you do. I want to check your work, and I want you to connect with us much cheaper, much faster. He's from there, he knows the story. And once you get it, maybe you get a good contact, and that person is covering things for you and for others. So more opportunities for journalists, more opportunities for freelancers, which I'm sure is gonna have uh, happen. 360 in your pocket, integrated and contextualized, not like a fireplace. Right now, 360, it's like looking to a fireplace. Great, like initially with Periscope, you remember? Just put it. Great. We talk, we explain things. So we need to add text. We need to say that place where you're looking at happens at, or that, or that. And same time, I think it's going to be time for 360 mobile uh, creating content and mobile consumption content. Uh, because the glasses are great, but probably we leave them like the cinema for great experiences. But to consume quick things, probably a phone is going to be better adapted. Um, let's go on journalism. That's even harder. Um, I think we're going to go in a more balanced journalism. We are on the fever. We were on the fever on Mojo. I think this year many of you were tweeting, my Mojo kit is lighter. So we realize that we can do the job with one mic, with a shoulder pod, with anything like that, and we don't need much more. So balanced, we will understand better that no, not that many gear for everything. Sometimes we need them, but not everything. So we will use better the tools. We will collect and we will select better tools. Uh, and finally, we'll do better storytelling. Specific content for each channel. I would say real specific content for each channel. Uh, addressing to a clear, to specific audience uh, in a much better way. So addressing correctly to the person. Maybe flooding is not the right thing. Maybe knowing our targets, our niche communities, it's much better and addressing to them in a more specific way. Uh, and finally, uh, doing more storytelling, which is our job, finally. We need to tell stories. So closer to the stories, rich storytelling, much more relevant, and trying to be unique. And I think that's the big thing. Some, some good friend told me sometimes, and he was not a journalist, you need to be valuable to the marketplace. All right, when we wake up and when we cover something, everybody knows that thing on Twitter. What do we bring if we go 10 hours later? We need context. We need to remember things. We are journalists. We need good investigation. So we, we have to bring something that those machines uh, that this morning we were discussing about, if they're killing journalists or journalism or not, are really killing journalism. They are, if we just tell what happened. Yeah, everybody knows what happened since 12 hours ago. So why don't trying to bring something else? what makes us valuable. So anyone who really is going to be a good journalist is going to stay on the path, is going to be there, but just bringing really good content and being innovative on that. And finally, I wanted to say that we're going to be better. I remember many of the cameramen in my team hating me. I think they were waiting for me when I was getting out of the, of the building uh, because they were saying this whatever, uh, is going to take her job out. Well, actually, we've got now more cameras than last year. And uh, I think that if you are like that, that that's a fake photo. Uh, I asked one of my cameras, who now is a good guy with me, to take a picture like that. If your camera is like that, any tripod, I mean, if you've got a camera, a tripod camera, let's say, um, it can be replaceable by any mojo, trip, tripod, or anything. If your camera is like that, valuable to the marketplace, getting a good statics, knowing about it, just trying to find the best image. 
cameras. We need cameras. We need good image. We need their knowledge. So we're not going to lose it. It, it. It's stupid for that. So at the end of all, better stories, better technology, of course, but better journalism. So thank you very much. And one last thing. I did this in 10 or 12 minutes. I just wrote the whole story of what happens in, in the newsroom. I know it's in Spanish. I, I haven't done it in English yet. And uh, I have to, to see if it's possible. I wrote these two books, one about election coverages and the, the other one about all these mojo thing and digital transformation with the help of some of, of the guys here who I want to thank you, like Corinne, like Mark, like Glenn, like so many. So thank you very much. And uh, well, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Well, thank you, Pipo. Um, I noticed you're actually doing a 360 right now. Yeah. Um, um, how do you fit that into your everyday workflow? Uh, I mean, is it, is it uh, replacing your regular workflow or is it an add-on? Well, right now, 360 in our newsroom, it's just a game. We're testing it. We're playing a bit with them. Uh, we're discussing a lot about if so far with what we have on 360, we are under a technological experience or under a new way to tell stories. Of course we can tell stories. We are um, working together with some people who are around everywhere, for example, trying to make better products and then convert that stories into more contextual and better and trying to add context in life or out of life. But um, what we tried so far was three, four, five pieces which were great but tiny and testing and without telling it very loud that we're doing, just testing right now. Because you said it was quite difficult to get people to accept Mojo as a way of doing their jobs. Um, yeah. How, what do you imagine their reaction would be if you also tell them you now also have to do a 360 video? Well, as far as they want to tell stories, I think it doesn't make any difference. I mean, if you tell a reporter, right, you're going to go to cover a demonstration that is on the street, they say there was 50,000 people and some other people say there were 2,000. Get your camera, get your 360, and I want you to shut it so we can show before, after, and how is it going on live uh, so people can see it. The only thing that it's really important, I, I guess, with 360, it's what they were discussing a couple of hours ago, which is try to introduce 360 on, on relevant things, on things that make sense. If not, you lose your credit, you lose your time, and people, your reporters, are going to kill you because they're going to say this was a mess, that, that was stupid. So it's important that every time you try to change something, they realize that that's successful. It works, and it works for them. And afterwards, they ask you sometimes. They get proactive. And should I, should I do a Facebook Live on that? Yeah, do it. Should I send you a, a look live in the morning because I'm going to do that very early? Yes, please, do it. So some of them, the, the hard thing is the mindset. If you get that, you're, you're done. I mean, that's perfect. And we're partly getting it. Some of them do it because they know they have to. Some of them, many right now, do it because they, they, they enjoy it. They tell stories. It's what they want to. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, well, to start off the discussion, there's something I actually wondered about today. You say it's very easy to teach people this. Um, so how come there's still no... Uh, TV station, broadcasting company that makes mobile content just for mobile, nothing else. Any, any idea why? Because it's, it's easy to do, it's cheap as we all agree on. Why isn't there a company making advantage of that? Aaron? Um, if my boss is watching, I might be in trouble. <laughs> But I'd say it's because the people making those decisions come from those legacy streams. It's nothing against them, but that's what they know, right? So they're, they're, they're trying to catch up with all this stuff like everyone else, right? So the decisions come from a, an experience base that tells them to go in a different direction. So you know, once we're in charge, once you're in charge, everything will radically change, right? But um, uh, television is in, in trouble. It, it increasing the number of people watch content on their mobile phones. Uh, people, do you see a future for uh, something that's just for mobile? Well, I'm sure it should be, but again, I don't have the boss watching, but um, <laughs> the problem is that many times bosses or big guys on the companies are looking for the revenue. And actually, right now, the revenue mobile to mobile is not that easy or not that direct as they're used to. And I presume it happens a bit same that happened when the big change with uh, um, companies of music or cinema 
at the beginning, nobody wanted to change their business model because they tried, all right, we, we, get, we get less money, but we still do that because we need to get that. Well, while they were doing that, there was a guy doing Netflix, another one doing Spotify, another one doing... So if they don't change their mind, that's going to happen. Uh, so it should happen, yeah, I agree, yeah. but it's not our decision only. Patrick, do you see SVT going in that direction? Well, <clears throat> we... Um it's a great debate in Scandinavia about uh, social media. So SVT, as a public service company, we don't uh, put uh, original video material on Facebook and Snapchat and uh, that. We only publish it in, on our own platforms. So we're still stuck in the, in the broadcast format. format. Yes. Yeah. It's a great debate about that in Scandinavia now. Yeah. But we're one of the few that don't publish directly to the social media. Judy, you, you have your own uh, company. Is it something you could be doing? Just making mobile content for mobile and creating a new media company like that? Absolutely, yeah. If there's any investors in the room tonight, come and speak to us <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> no, I think there's definitely, that's definitely something that should be. I, I think that probably is the future. Well done. <laughs> you, you answered the question. <laughs> Because um, the, the future of Mojo, you all said it's difficult to project and uh, we, we've seen a 360 uh, discussion before and Android versus iOS discussion. Um, is there any way we can, we as a broadcaster or as a media person, uh, we can prepare ourselves for the future of Mojo? Anyone? I presume just doing Mojo. Doing Mojo, I mean, you discover things when you do things. I mean, if you don't move, nothing happens. When you move, you realize things have to happen. So the only way it's, as we did probably all, um, making lots of mistakes. Um, we are in a moment in where we need to test an error, test an error, and realize which are the good moves. We try to do l little mistakes so that it doesn't punish a lot, but I think the only way it's being there. And, uh, there is going to be a moment that we'll see slight space to move in and say, all right, that's the moment. We do it in a way. We, we create content just from mobile to mobile. And we do it along the day because we believe that just by doing that, we're going to have people kind of warm to come to the TV where our bosses think it's the only way they get the revenue and they will watch us. And it works pretty well. It's not direct. It's not easy. It, it's not easy going on bike. Uh, when you start, it's hard, and then you get faster, and then you get better. It's not easy blogging. When you start your blog, it's terrible. 17 visits. That's it. <laughs> but then sometimes it works. So I think it's probably the way. Okay. Any questions from the room? John Inge, is there a microphone? Yeah, there are the microphones. <laughs> it's the pink one. Yeah. Um, I'm John from Norwegian Broadcasting, and I work pretty much the same workflow as Erin does. Uh, and I spoke to you yesterday about yeah. several issues. But um, on a daily basis, when you and I create our content, we make it for TV, we make it for radio, we push it online. Uh, we are supposed to maybe do a Snapchat story, update on Twitter. We should do some kind of Vine while they were active, not anymore. Uh, we should do 360 video and we should do some Instagram photos and we should do all these kinds of things. Is there a limitation for what is possible for one person to actually achieve? What will happen in the future? Will we be bound to carry with us all kinds of equipment for all sorts of platforms? and to work as one-man bands, as Patrick has been doing for many years, and you, Aaron, has been doing for many years as well. So is the future going to be like F hell for us as persons and journalists, or will technology make our lives better? It's a question for all of you, actually. Aaron, you want to start? Sure, I guess. Uh, well, cloning technology must be close. I mean, this is the wrong conference for that. <laughs> but when there's five Johns, it'll be no problem. John 1 will do the 360 and, and so on. Um, to tackle that, I think that one of the things that has to happen is a reorganization of the newsrooms, where there's the content gathering happening, maybe, and then you have a primary. After you've gathered, uh, you're dealing with one primary file, but then the content is pushed back in a, in a more raw form, and then it's parsed out to... You have your Snapchat person, maybe, and you have your, uh, your, your TOV person, and you have your person who's 
um, maybe cutting down the thing, the, all the workflow I've done to make the radio person, the, the the radio story out of the TV story, so that you you can be freed up maybe to do live hits or to do, uh, you know, the talk tape into the afternoon show. And yeah, I I'm, I hear what you're saying. So I think it it all comes down to that reorganization of the workflow, of the entire. Uh, organization you work for. Yeah, I've, got a, yeah. I've, got, I've got a solution. If we start uh, spending less on, on satellites and using more tools, for example, Mojo, when we go on live, uh, if we do that and we, we, we earn that money and not spending it on, on satellites, uh, we probably can invest in someone specialized on Snapchat like Yusuf does on, on CNN uh, and, and do that real segmentation on channels. That's job creation. Uh, Oh. Yeah, and at the same time, I would say, on the other way, and now I'm going to be like um, negative on that part. Well, not negative. What do you do on, on your life? You are here, and maybe you see something, and you tweet it. But then you see a great image, and you Instagram it. And then you see whatever, and you Snapchat it. We do that in our lives. Why not apply it to our jobs? I mean, we do it naturally. But on the other way, if we get that money back, we can specialize. So um, <laughs> maybe it would be good. So hiring a second person to do all the content, the well, extra content. Having a person for, uh, specifically for Snapchat, having a person specifically for Twitter, but I mean, it, it needs a change, a big change of mindset. The, the other thing, if I could, is, is the specialization is important because um, when you try to do everything, which I'm trying to do right now, you do everything poor. Yeah, and everything pretty I, much the same. And pretty much the same. Yeah. And that waters things down. So it's a, it's a proof of life at this point in a lot of cases. We can do this. But I think you're right. Specializing in that way, which is in, in a lot of ways going back uh, to, to, what, yeah. to what we were doing in the past, whether it was in silos. But you can, um, you can be more nimble as a reporting staff because everyone maybe can do everything but can focus That's on true. their strength. Yeah, absolutely. Pa Patrick, you, you do... Yeah. Yes, it was the comments I get in the beginning. Patrick, you come with another thing to do when out, out on the fields. Uh, most people at SVT and on RK are multi-skilled. They do everything, of course. But, it's, <clears throat> but today, uh, this actually give people a life. In the, in the basic thing, it's kind of depressing to, to tell you you have to go back to basic. This is the future of a mobile. That's crazy. But uh, we have to do that journey and find the benefits uh, so Nick Garnett says, if I go to a car accident, I film, I edit, and I go home to my kids. I don't go back to the station. I don't ever took a, take up the big camera. And suddenly, uh, our, my colleagues have, have noticed that benefits with using the mobile. So uh, I had that, that discussion for one year ago, but not anymore, actually. But is it ever a problem for you to... Uh, fill up to all the needs of your bosses. I mean, I mean, this, the the Snapchat thing, the Twitter, I'm the Instagram. My own boss. Nobody tells me what to do. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> As I said, we we don't put uh, original material on Snapchat and social media. That's easier for us out, out of the field, actually. But that day will maybe come. <laughs> maybe I can have a follow-up. Yeah, should go ahead. Uh, because. I hear what you say, and you think that when you save money on your revenue that you will be able to actually hire some other person to do that. Well, I have bad news for you about the future because this is the situation in Norway. We have a lot of money already, and we are not depending on saving money on revenue to, uh, to hire new persons to do those specialized Snapchat uh, or any kind of social media platform. We have, we have people who does that already. But as for me working as a journalist in a region very remote region, all by myself. I, I don't have any crew around me, but I have a big backpack with a professional camera, with a 360 camera, with a, with a drone, as for now, for the last week. Uh, so things are kind of escalating. I carry with me all the time at least five different cameras. And this makes a big demand from my bosses because they say, well, you have all the equipment, you should feed us with content. And the thing is, I lose control over my stories. And that is what really annoys me, because I, I would like to have to be in full control of my story, because there are often many um, shades of the, of the facts that are presented that are, is not possible to, to make. Even if I make the longest web story, I can't cover all the facts. And then I can send some raw material into the social media desk, and they will fuck it up, everything, because they, <laughs> they, they are just looking for clickbaits and everything. And this is really annoying for me. But my, my feeling is that all these technology developments 
raises another demand for even more content from us as journalists. And this is the thing in the future we should be really aware of. And I hope that you, if you have like original uh, employees like we have in, in my station, that you treat them well and give them a few days off from time to time. Send them to Ireland or something. The first thing I'm going to do is hire you. <laughs> I see another question in the back. Guillaume, Christopher. I'm going to jump here. He's back, oh, back here. Oh, you're going to jump. Oh, Glenn, sure. Sorry. If I can actually get my voice to work. And I'm supposed to speak again in a minute. But anyway, <clears throat> at the very first MojoCon, we had a futurist called Gerd Leonhardt who did the keynote address. And during that keynote address, he talked about how machine learning and artificial intelligence and everything was going to revolutionize everything we do. So now I'm going to play complete devil's advocate and agent provocateur and say no one in everything, and I've been in almost every session so far today, has mentioned the impact of machine learning and algorithms and 5G, how that's going to affect what we do. But I can promise you, and I'll actually state my career on this, so I better get good at gardening. But I honestly think that by 2020, when we get 5G, we will be pretty much live on the go constantly with the devices. It may be 8K live streams, which can be cut up in all different ways using algorithms and distributed to all platforms almost in real time. But the problem is the machines are coming and we need to start to work out the creative part of this because that's where our essence is. We, I think personally, we labor too much about the technological solutions and lose sight of the fact that it's the, cre the creative art of the storytelling that is unique to us. The best algorithms in the world will not tell stories with empathy and passion the way that people do. That's where we need to put our energy. Thank you. There wasn't a real question in there, Glenn, but uh, <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe Guillaume uh, is uh, next. Because uh, I used to be a journalist, I uh, worked for nearly 20 years, first in radio and in French, uh, public TV, and I'm now a motor trainer and consultant. Uh, thank you, Glenn, for stealing my thunder. I was about to uh, bring the same <laughs> argument to the table. But other than that, just a, a slight correction and then a question. A slight correction on uh, teams actually producing content on mobile in t within TV newsroom for mobile exist at SVT, I see them work, uh, at the BBC, I see them work, uh, the French partner with uh, some uh, third party that do that, exactly that, and bring new kinds of storytelling, parallel storytelling than the main TV linear products to, for mobile consumptions. And that is something I think that we should, should all be looking at. Uh, the, the, the question is, uh, Talking about future, I mean, we've been hearing about pushing your content to them, to the users. Don't you think the future is the users and not you? Anyone? <laughs> uh, everyone's looking at me, why? Um, <laughs> Well, and you're right, we're doing, what, just to, to your correction, we are doing that already in the CBC as well, in our local newsroom, but it's, it's, it's the um, exception, not the rule, I guess is what I would say. So much more of that in, in order to tackle John's problems. Because those problems still exist because that's not the norm. Um, yeah, probably. I mean, I think that uh, one of the things you're seeing uh, with, with we're design, when the project we did where we designed pieces for the Facebook Live is we consciously took the reporter's out of most of the pieces, because I think what people want online is much less of us. And, and the, the logical extension of that is much more of themselves. So uh, yeah, I don't think there, there's going to be, uh, I don't think we're gonna eliminate the role for the storyteller, but the storyteller's gonna be taken out of the story a lot more, which I think is a, which is a good thing. Um, so yes, more of the people out there, but I think you'll still always need someone to, I don't know the word you wanna use, maybe curate. Um, analyze, you know, I'll let someone else smarter than I come up with that. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be, you guys, you guys figure out the word. But yeah, so that's what I would say. Because of the time, I would say uh, one more question. Um, and you already have the microphone, Corinne, so go ahead. I apologize, it's my second question for the day. But um, it's a question actually for those of you working in television. So in Australia, we don't have very high take up of Mojo as yet. And what I've realized as I've moved into the tertiary sector is that a lot of journalists, and also I'm trying to teach my students, um, don't have the knowledge that you need 
uh, to take the content out of the equipment and put it into post-production. There's an assumption that what comes out of the phone is ready for broadcast. And a lot of journalists actually don't know anything about things like transcoding or codecs or frame rates and so on. So I wanted to ask those of you who are working in television how you have approached um, bridging that knowledge gap in your colleagues as you've brought them along on your mojo journey. Patrick, can I ask you to yes. start? I, um, we have two lines in SVT, the geeks that know everything about frame rate and, uh, and, uh, and uh, high quality, all the essentials, and we have built our own app that has the same quality as Filmic Pro, but they don't know why. <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> it's a solution. And they don't need to know? They don't need to know. Just push once but and hold still. When, when you're in contact with, with the tech people back at the uh, broadcasting station, yeah. how does that discussion work? I mean, do you relate on the same level? Do you have different ways of... I, I tell you this, I began with, with the fancy apps and fancy thing and vertical and do as you want, but the only way to get the technicians into this was to put... Uh, we had good technicians on SVT. They, it was actually to, to, to put an effort to get the high quality. It, it was the only way to get the whole company behind this. Yeah. We can't do an app that doesn't uh, have 50 frames. That will be, look ugly in, in broadcast. It was the only, only way, but we were, the story is the essential, of course, but uh, to get the whole company behind this, we have to have high technology behind the scenes. Pippa? Yeah, my experience, from my experience what we did, uh, as I was saying, initially was more doing against the IT guys, because it was like, this guy's gonna annoy us for a lot of time and all that. But after we crossed the first tests, and they realized that you were going to do that, um, they started working together with you, getting the best solution. So we've been, I don't know, we spent for probably a month or a month and a half testing conversions, testing frame rates, testing how it was going to work, the audio and everything, trying to see if it was respecting everything. And at the end of all, we worked together. And that was great. And about the, the reporters, what Corinne was asking, um, what I tried to, I don't know if it's a good thing or not, but what I did was initially make it easy, really easy, simple. And once they get it, once they start getting in, start giving them tips and start talking sometimes about frame rates and sometimes about get the light and get the whatever and try to get in, and can I do that more stable? Yeah, I'll lend you my own gimbal. Oh, great, and they try it and that's great. So, you start getting them in the in the in the game, so but slow down, like. Judy. And, and I find that there's a, there's a there's a big difference between kind of like there's people who know the tech stuff and there's the people who don't, and I think in television especially, people are scared to ask because they'll appear to sound silly, and there isn't really kind of an environment of encouraging people to ask questions like what is frame rate because those things aren't difficult to learn. And they, they just take maybe, a, and a, like you said, I think that's a great point. Once, once someone gets onto what the frame rate is and they go home and watch another video on what it means if you mess up the frame rate, you know, and it just takes interest and a really open communication within all the organizations. I think that's also really important. Thank you. I think we have to leave it at that because the clock in front of us is uh, blinking. So I would thank you very much for uh, all your uh, new teaching. Thank you very much to Patrick and Judy, Pipo, Aaron and Vice. I was worried about that name all day.